this dialogues that you have with your client institutions and the one that you're holding in India right now in, in Mumbai, um, how do you map back the, the sessions in this dialogue to what you need to be doing uh, topically? At the end of the day, our events, such as this one here, and y you will see it's a quite different type of event than the normal conference. Right. We, we, I'm of a deep belief with my team that human interactions are the key mm. to, uh, to, uh, to anything. Right. Because yes, we are in a B2B business, as they say, but at the end of the day, it's all about people. Mm. And so putting people in touch around a particular subject, like, you know, in this case, mobile payments, we basically do that, and then we let the magic happen. And magic, we noticed, happens. We have seen it at uh, several, you know, tribe at Cybers mm -hmm. events. Magic does emerge from these uh, human interactions. Ideas come, and you can see people are engaged, working together, knowing each other, mm -hmm collaborating and ideas do emerge. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these ideas have nothing to do with SWIFT and that is totally okay. Right. We, we, make, we, we pledge that we will make these, avail these ideas yeah. available to wh whomever can do something about them. Right. Some ideas are quite relevant to SWIFT, right. which in which case we take them and right. we incubate them. Right. Some ideas we put in the wild saying, look, there is this gem rough gem, we don't know yet what to do with it, does anybody else know what to do with it? So that's, that's what the, the uh, that's how so this... More, you're behaving more as a processing center of ideas rather than an owner of ideas. In my team, so the, the my team indeed, right. so the owner of ideas and the business, pe the people who do something with ideas right. are not in my team. I act, indeed my team acts as a facilitator of a process facilitator, as you say. All of this conversation begs one question. So at which point does SWIFT decide to actually take an equity in one of the um, initiatives, innovation you know, initiatives um, that's boiling on the stove? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I will give you the recent example of uh, our uh, acquisition of a business unit from Sunguard and the newly created resulting uh, commercial company called Arkelis, uh, Swift company. So we made this decision uh, in order to better serve the, the needs of a particular market. In, in this particular case, this is the top market in the interface segment. That was asking us for a product and that was asking us for essentially something that the Swift cooperative is not suited really to do, which is a customized product. Uh, we, we tend to produce products for the full community. In this case, we, there was a requirement for a customer's, customized product, and not only product, but services as well. And at that point, it was clear to us that it would not, the, the better construct for this particular innovation would be this acquisition, rather than trying to do it ourselves. So it was triggered really by the market, uh, market demand, and our own research about this particular innovation uh, as, uh, as we went along. And which then begs the question, how does the board think about these acquisitions and what sort of um, ROIs do they put in place? Uh, well, so I think both the board and the executives as entities uh, govern in the governance of SWIFT you know, had to invent some pieces of this story because this is the first acquisition that SWIFT is making. Um, so, uh, so I think, uh, and, and I think everybody, uh, everybody sees that as a potential of other, you know, that there, there is potential for other acquisitions in the future. So. Given the future of financial services and the future of huge infrastructure for financial services, becoming more open, um, costing less, um, and perhaps more collaborative in terms of the different players. Um, what is the thing that SWIFT fears most in terms of its own continued um, uh, 
survival as a, as a utility? I would say it's, uh, you know, I was mentioning earlier in the, in the talk, the curveball. You know, the, the uh, arrival of an entrance that provides, uh, you know, a different, so that changes the market, essentially. That's, that's what, uh, uh, at least from my perspective, uh, uh, as a director, of one of the senior managers of the company, that's what I fear most. Um, final question: uh, What does this? What are, what does all of these attention on innovation in Swift? How does that? How do they affect your core business, your current core business, which is really transaction banking? Um, so innovation today. Uh, so as, uh, if I will answer your question in two ways. Within Swift, there is a lot of innovation going on for our core business, mm. which is kind of behind the scenes. You don't see it, but. You know, we do uh, a lot of in work and innovations. Sometimes these are small little things, and you choose not to even call them innovation. It's you know business as usual. People work to make things better. Sometimes they are quite sizable innovations in terms of how to. So that's one. Then I think on the when we look at the outside uh, idea generation, typically the ideas that come to us are more adjacent to the core business than the core business itself. Mm -hmm. we, do, we do see some ideas about the core business itself, right. but usually we see them more adjacent. Okay. You know, like, uh, like for example, the IBAM hub, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, it's really an adjacent idea. Right. Yeah? It's, we have the core business, but then the core business will be enhanced right. by the fact that we have this. But the back-end back -end engine is driven by Swift. But the back end, uh, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and what can we look forward to in the next three months or so uh, in terms of the activities of Info, uh, InnoTribe uh, and your, uh, your, your the program? In your Thank you for the question. So we have three in terms of the most visible things, therefore the events like we do here. Um, uh, very soon, uh, we will participate, the SWIFT and the InnoTribe team will participate to an event um, that touches a totally different aspect, more the human aspect of things. Right. Uh, we will be participating to the Ashoka Run Change Makers Week in Paris yeah. uh, by uh, near the end of June. Okay. So there will be an InnoTribe lab there, mm. more focused on how can we, the financial community, be an actor in this ecosystem of social entrepreneurs, especially in developing countries. Yeah. So that's one. Then you will see us at Cybos in Toronto, of yeah, course, with the InnoTribe at yeah. Cybos. Yeah. And then uh, in, in uh, late October, we will be running an InnoTribe lab in the context of an uh, event called Compass, which is a very high profile event in California uh, where we will run uh, an event more focused on how can banks be the driver of the new economies. Right. So Costa Paris, thank you so much for spending time with us and we hope that we will continue this discussion because uh, innovation is a never ending game. So of there's course. no uh, full stop to this conversation, it's a comma and we hope okay. that we continue the conversation. Yes, by all means. By thank all you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.